You know the vibes. Welcome back to another week here at the Hoop Genius Podcast. It's myself, Mo Mutsu. Alongside me is always the three-time NBA champion and our weekly guest, Mr. Parking Lot Perry. Scott is here once again. <laughs> Fellas, how you been? Good weekend? Great week here, Mo. Good to see you as always, Good my man. Good to see you too. Good to see you too. Well, well you <laughs> know, as you know, always. And, 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 and I see BJ is, is, is repping... Our hey, hometown hey, you, you are you, you, finally, finally not that. bottom of the Eastern Conference. The 14 game <laughs> losing streak for the Wizards has got Piston fans all up. Um, that's okay. This, that's, that's okay. Show Talk, about always, um... Talk about us now. Talk about us now, Mo. We'll see. We'll see. This show, as always, is brought to you by NBA 2K24. Um, but very soon, 2K is releasing a new wrestling game, WWE. Are either of you guys wrestling fans? Not a, when I was a kid, I, I, I used to. So. When, I, when I was when I was a yeah. kid, I watched a, a lot of wrestling. But uh, but, I, but I have a question a for you. Both. If you <laughs> were a wrestler, what would be your walkout song? <laughs> I'm gonna let BJ go with that first because you know I'm, I'm not if, good if you at were a wrestler, you B, walk into BJ the ring. is the music man, so I'm gonna let him go. What's your What's your <laughs> walking song? <laughs> Well, you can't just have one. You gotta have no, one. no, no, no. Because all the legendary wrestlers have their theme song, and everyone knows when they my, hear that sound, my, which my, wrestlers going to appear. My theme song would be one of one of my favorite artists, who's become a, you know, I've become a friend. You know, I don't, I don't like to throw, you know, whatever like people throw names, but I mean, when as a kid, I was a huge fan of Public Enemy, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. over the years, I became friends. I became friends with Chuck D and Flavor and the S1Ws and all these people. And they had this song that really kind of captured my youth, Fight the Power. Fight the Power. And Mm -hmm. that song resonated with the community, everything about that era, being from Detroit, the underdog, but more importantly, socially, just it embodied a lot of things on a global level. So if I were to think of just one song from my youth that really captured my imagination and what that song meant to our culture, it would be that. And knowing and getting a chance to know Chuck D and and what that meant to us, that would be my one song. See, that's if a surprise. Said, just that's a surprise to me, BJ. Cause I thought you'd go with Obi Trice. Real name, no gimmicks. Yeah. <laughs> Rap. I've been in it ever since I was invented. See, I thought that would have been your vibe, but uh, yeah, let's, let's, let's get back to basketball. Yeah, good. let's get to basketball. Yeah, yeah. Let's get back to basketball. Um, we got to get Chuck D on. You know, I got a hundred percent. A hundred percent. So, yeah. in the NBA, the big news this week is um, the Los Angeles Lakers lost. Uh, no, the big news is LeBron James was the first player to ever score 40,000 points. And you know it's a big night for LeBron and the Lakers when they end up losing the game. That seems to happen every time he breaks records. Um, but 40,000 points is kind of crazy. Can we think, is there anything I've ever done 40,000 times in my life? I don't think I've even done anything 40,000 points. Um, LeBron James... In the record books, once again, not only did he surpass Kareem Abdul-Jabbar for the all-time leading score in the NBA, he now is setting a record that we may never see broken. Guys, I wanted to put this into context for you. So I looked at a few of the numbers, right? Because you've got to think, who else is going to surpass the 40,000-point mark? Because LeBron is not done, right? When you look mm-hmm. at right now, this season, if there's no injuries, he's on track to play about 71 games, the most he's played since 2018. And if he scores about uh, 1,800 points. Um, He's going to go into next year uh, with 40,500 career points and playing 60 games a season for the next two years, averaging 23 points a game. He would finish his career with 43,000 points. So who are some of the names that you think could catch him? Because Kevin Durant, James Harden, Stephen Curry are all prolific scorers, but they're way too late in their careers to catch up. Are there any names you have in mind that you think could even get close to this mark? Well, that, <clears throat> that is a difficult one because, you know, you look, the longevity first and foremost and the consistency of performance, we're talking about over a 21-year span where he's averaged 27 points a game. Uh, his rookie year was the lo- his lowest average, and that was like 20.9. 
and he hasn't been below 25 points a game since. Uh, you know, Durant would have come to mind, but, you know, now Durant is 15, 16 years in himself and uh, and LeBron is still playing. So that's going to be a, a tough one for him to catch because he would have been the first player to come to mind. Because KD me. would have had a chance to even surpass Kareem if it wasn't for all those injuries he had within the space of like those two, three years where he was pretty much ran off. Right. Yeah. <laughs> It's really, I mean, is there anybody in the NBA I can speak to? I mean, you know, Victor Mimiyama is going to be a terrific player. Can he play 21 seasons? That will be the test. Well, well, and, well uh, here's the thing. He's on my, yeah, go ahead. When Mimiyama, if he was to average 28 points a game, playing 70 games a season for 20 years, mm -hmm. only averages, only equals out to 39,200 points. So that still wow. isn't even enough to get to 40K. Exactly. If we look exactly. at like the most, the young star in the league who's racking up the point scoring totals, the quickest right now is Luka Doncic. If Luka Doncic uh, plays 66 games every season while scoring 30 points a game for the next 13 seasons, he doesn't even get to 38,000. So Giannis, to get to 40,000 points, would have to average 30 points a game 75 games a season for the next 11 years. I don't think there's currently a player in the NBA. If there was a player who joined the NBA as a rookie, they would have to average 35 points a game for 15 and a half seasons, playing 75 games a season to get to 40,000 points. Yeah. BJ, did you ever expect in your lifetime to see someone score 40,000 points throughout their career? Yeah, yeah, I did. I, 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 I really did. And and this is why I expected to see this. You know, Kareem had what, 38,000? Yeah, hmm. 38,000, three. Kareem seven, had 38. Like, Kareem had 38,000. And I remember 38,387. 30, 30, yeah. 30, there you go. And there was a historian that I had as a coach, the late Johnny Bach and the late Tex Winters. And they, I used to, I was in, Scott and I, we're always fascinated by, I was always fascinated by sitting at the table with older people to listening to the stories. Cause I always felt I had the opportunity to learn. No question. And Tex winners and these guys used to always talk about, you know, like players, you know, they would talk about Connie Hawkins and Spencer Haywood and, mm -hmm. and Earl Monroe and, and all these things. And Johnny Bach and these guys would always talk about things. And then they would always, we would talk about, about the following, like the, what the human body was actually capable of doing. And, and one of the things he said to me, and I remember being an executive, I looked at it was Kareem wasn't even allowed to play on the varsity team as a freshman. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you put that 38,000, I don't know how many years he played. I think he played about what, 19 or 20 years, 20, right? yeah. 20, 20 years. Yeah. And then you put those four years on of college. Put, yeah. Right. And that he kind of gave us the blueprint of that. Okay. Now, this is nothing. Uh, hey, congratulations to LeBron, da da da. But then I remember Tex Winners saying this. He said, Wilt only played about 14 years or so in the NBA. Right. He went two years in college. Then he played one year for the Harlem Globetrotters. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. And he was doing this in Converse Cons, by the way. <laughs> high tops. Yeah, was, yeah, okay. <laughs> I don't even think he was in high tops. I don't even no, think they, he was they in were high tops. Tops. They were okay, low tops. They were low tops. Just to rub a soul and some That's the little thing that BJ and I go back and forth. Yes, with, yes. High tops and low tops. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then when he retired... Right, he was still only what 34 or 35. And he became he a high still, jumper, right? <laughs> he went into no, this the... guy was an incredible athlete. What I'm saying yes. is, what I'm saying is, we've seen this athlete, right? It was brought to my attention years ago, like 30 years ago. I'm not saying I'm not taking away from anybody what they've done. Obviously, you got to do it, but we've seen a level of athlete that has the potential to do this. Mm -hmm. 
And I expect now, now that it has been done, that LeBron has actually given us a visual that it will be duplicated now because other players will be like, oh, we've seen it before. It's kind of like cracking the 100-yard dash. No one will break 10 seconds, and all of a sudden it was done, and all of a sudden it was like, oh, oh, yeah, I could do that too. So I think there will be more players. Now, it requires – it will require – it will require some luck. And the luck being you got to stay healthy to do it. No question. But I do think with a player like a Wilt Chamberlain, the guy averaged 50. Okay. And now we're in an era now. We're in an era now where, in my opinion, offense is kind of encouraged. And I think someone can average 35 points a night now. Mm -hmm. I really do. I mean, it's just, I, I it's just a case they, of if they can do they, that think about for 17 you, yeah, and a half right. seasons, though. Yeah, yeah, and but it's just when you bring up Will, it's interesting. That's the one record that may never be eclipsed. He, that's he, what I'm he saying. Aver he he averaged 50 points a game in 61, 62. This is this is what I'm saying. And that's that record. That 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 no that no. Do you know the old. craziest one? Right, if I'm correct in uh, thinking. He averaged over 48 minutes a game one season because he, he played, played overtime. In every yeah, minute every game. So, exactly. so that was the same season. Overtime. It would yeah, be physically yeah. impossible for a player to average <laughs> over 48 games, 48 no, minutes a game, right? No, it's not impossible. It, it's been done. It's not impossible. It's just the mindset. Well, this is what I this is what I said. I, I made a TikTok video yesterday where I said, the thing with LeBron, everyone goes on longevity, longevity, but it's really the durability because in his first 15 seasons, no question. he only missed 71 games. That's an average of 4.7 games per season missed. So now when you look at the all-stars of the league and we're at all-star weekend and everyone's doing their media interviews saying, it's unfair that we have to play 65 games per season to get our awards. Okay. If this is the mindset of the current NBA star that they don't even want to play 65 games, let alone 75, let alone 82, none of these guys, none of these guys are ever going to catch the bronze record. It's going to have to be a generational shift where players come back in to wanting to compete night in and night out with, no, I'm not too tired to play in a back-to-back. -back. No, I'm, I am I know I've been in a club, but I still want to play. Will, it that, will that's change. what I think. I don't think anyone in it this current change. generation of players is going to get near that record. It has to be someone who comes in with the mindset of I'm going to go out there every single night and I'm going to play every minute possibly available to me as you saw LeBron James do throughout the first 15 years of his career. So, yeah, I, no, I, I, the, go ahead, Scott. Obviously, no, obviously you, we're talking about at minimum – 21, 21 years from now, 22 years from now, if we're not saying that it's, nobody's in the league, it's 22 years from now, mm -hmm. at minimum, probably. You know? yep. Yeah, I think That's, it's like 30, 40, okay. four years. Oh, it's, oh yeah, no, yeah. Th th there's no question. I think it's going to be a while, but I do agree with BJ on this. You know, there's an old saying that, you know, records are made to be broken. And it, you, you heard that a lot coming up and growing up. And no matter how great a talent or great a player that we see in front of us in current day, there's always somebody coming from behind. <laughs> maybe, it's, maybe, it's a, maybe it's a year or two later. Maybe it's 10 years later. Maybe it's 20 years later. But somebody's coming. You know, some, somebody is, is, is going to, um, you know, break through that ceiling and, 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 you know, maybe eventually eclipse it now. Will that be in our lifetime? You know, we'll, we'll see. But it's, uh, again, I've just got to give it, uh, the, the biggest testament to me of this is the longevity piece and the consistency that went along with it. And uh, I mentioned yesterday when I was talking about this issue, what I give LeBron a lot of credit for, because BJ, you you recall this, because I remember you called me about him when you first saw him in high school when he was a 10th grader. Mm -hmm. He was elite at attacking the basket and creating for his teammates. But as you recall, as an 18-year-old coming in the league, he was not a consistent mid-range shooter, let alone deep ball shooter. And to his credit, and you know, you're talking about the amount of hours and reps players put in their games, uh, LeBron did that. 
he got better in both of those spaces and improved as a free throw shooter along the way too. So all of that had to come together for him to be sitting here um, going over 40,000 points and, you know, probably like you said, you know, going to push it. You know, if yep. he's going to play two, three more years, you know, you're looking at maybe 44,000 points. Yep, so. it could very well. What do you think is the hardest record to break? If if every record is made to be broken, which one do you think that any player has? It could I, be like John Stockton's assist or like Will yeah. Chamberlain's 100 points in the game, the, averaging 50. Well, but... no, I, I, somebody may get to the 100 points in one game one day, but averaging 50 points a game for a season. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that record now is at 61, 62. So what are we look, looking at? Is that 63 years old, a 63-year-old record? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That I'm has just... stood the test of time. I think that that one for me, and he averaged 25 rebounds a game that season, if I'm not correct, uh, mistaken, right, BJ? Will. Some, uh, li listen, somebody can break I saw, it, I saying, saw a man, okay, mm -hmm. there's two things I didn't see. One, mm -hmm. I saw a man average 37 tonight with hand checking. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. With hand checking. Mm -hmm. Now I gotta believe, Scott, that that's at least eight more points on that without hand checking. I'm just saying I gotta <laughs> believe. <laughs> oh yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he he like I said he may have been the guy, you know, if he was playing along in this era to approach that. That's what I'm saying. I gotta but, believe, but, but but you know, will and the way the game was played back then, you know, you worked the ball inside so much more. Yeah, yeah, that, get those, the game, you need absolutely. those layups and dunks and absolutely. Oh, I mean, you, but I also saw a man who mm -hmm. was unguardable. His name was Shaquille O'Neal. Yeah, mm -hmm. and listen, I love Shaq. I love Shaq, and I think Shaq understands what I'm about to say. Shaq was an unstoppable force. I there agree. was no double team and there was no triple team in him when he wanted mm -hmm. to do what Shaq really wanted to do. And the fact that he didn't average 40 a night was only because he wasn't in condition to average 40 a night because there was no stopping him. Mm -hmm. We will see someone average over 40 a night and it's going to be a big guy because of what you just said. You got to get these easy opportunities. That's why elite scores are so efficient. One dribble pull up, two dribble pull. -up. You can't spend all your time doing all of the step backs and all of that because you have you time is of the essence. Shaq should have easily because when the big fella was upset and when he really wanted to dominate was no stopping yeah. him. None. And he will <clears throat> there will be another one. There will be another one that will come through and, this, and, and, and he will, will do it. Yeah, and it'll help if that guy can shoot seventy five percent from the free throw line too. And Shaq, and he and Shaq and all the time. a couple but threes here and there as well. Hurt. That hurts. This Shaq. is what. Yeah, this is Shaq. what I'm saying. Shaq probably could have averaged thirty five if he could have just shot seventy percent from the free throw line. Mm -hmm. Exactly. He could have yeah. done it then. Yeah. Shaq was an unstoppable. Listen, you, I know we talk about goats and all of that. I saw a man who was unstoppable. Mm -hmm. There was yeah. no, there was mm -hmm. no stopping him. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like there was no stopping the dunk if he really wanted to dunk it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There was no double team in him. You couldn't double team him, Scott. You couldn't even I double know. team him yeah, with the, a little the guy. Craziest part about Shaq's career is the amount of people who were employed by the other 29 teams, the other however many teams, just to have big bodies on the roster to foul him enough times. Because oh. there's teams Scott, you was, put together I teams. Did, I, I was gonna tell look, 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 look. We play we played him in the finals. We brought we signed Eldon Campbell. He was our third center. And every time we got to play, get ready to play the Lakers, two weeks out before we played him in the regular season, Larry Brown would stop playing Eldon Campbell a few extra minutes. Because we were going to use the 18 fouls. We were going to match, like you said, it made, we weren't going to double him because that just wasn't, you know, our you philosophy. You couldn't double him. You couldn't because, yeah, you it almost be wasting the man. Yeah, right. You, and you, you know, you, now you're wasting the man going over there, you know, and, you know, and Shaq got good enough where he could drop some passes off and things to, to, to open guys cutting to the basket. But we had, you know, three big guys 
that we rotated in on him for the entire game. And that was key for us being able to beat them once we got into the finals is that we had multiple bodies. If you didn't have at least three bigs, because, you know, you know, we started Ben Wallace, who was undersized with him, but he had the heart of a lion. I guess, you know, Rasheed was tall enough to guard him over there, but didn't have the girth <laughs> <laughs> to hold the position with him. <laughs> then you had, you know, I, I mentioned Eldon Campbell was huge for us. You know, and that you know, and then we had Memento Cool, who's another big body that you could just you know try to throw on him. You had to have multiple big bodies. One last point I do want to make, though, going back to what BJ was talking about, you know, and someone maybe averaging fifty. You know, consider this though: when Wilt played and the makeup of his team, how everything funneled obviously through Wilt right. and the level of talent around him. I think what makes it tougher to average 50 today is the mentality of all the players who really want to, you know, go out and prove that they can score and do these things. So now that player is going to have to be on the absolute right team with the right makeup, mental makeup of other players that we're going to be comfortable just going through him down there every trip down the court. Yeah. <laughs> hold on. Time out. Time out. Time out, so, Scott. So now, I, hold so on, Scott. Time, yeah, out. Exactly. time out. Time out. Time out, Scott. Hold on, Scott. All right. Hold okay. on. Time out, Scott. Time right. out. Time out. All right. Now, you and I are from Detroit, so let's have a Detroit conversation here. Mm-hmm. You have to be comfortable being uncomfortable being from Detroit. Because no one is deferring to anyone when it comes to playing in the game. Right. And what I have seen in today's game is the following. There aren't a lot of players who have what I would consider a dominant personality. Correct. It wasn't like Michael Jordan was saying, hey, guys, could you please pass me the ball? <laughs> oh, no. I get, no, I get no question. Yeah. Now, this Personality is gonna to have to have a little Detroit in him. Back. He's got to be. He's he got to have a no a, question. Like, Kobe Bryant, the late Kobe Bryant, rest in peace. Jordan, Will. Oh, they had the mentality. Yes, they had a different mentality. Was saying, and they was willing to be confrontational if need be. If you didn't throw them the ball, right. Akeem Olajuwon, Shaq. There was no Scott coming down talking about a heat check. <laughs> Just see if Give the three ball was no, going but see, on. But, right. but <laughs> see, that's but but you I, I agree with you, but that's my point. You know, these guys the way they're coming up playing now, they all coming down thinking that oh, I need a heat check. And so to get them galvanized, you know, like I said, the guy who's gonna average 50 in today's 50. game, he he's gonna have to go. He's gonna really have to come and be have this doggish mentality and like, <laughs> hey, be ready to tell everybody. No, if anybody wants to eat, to eat tonight, the, the game is coming through me. Yep. No, I don't. I, I don't and, see and no I, dogs like I, I don't see. I, I don't see that personality in the game right now. I just, I, I, don't I don't see that personality in society anymore. You said you know, I'm a grumpy old man now. I just don't see that. <laughs> I don't see no dogs around. It, it, it's going to show back breed. up. Mo, it's going to show back up. Yeah, yeah when right, my son gets to the league, then you'll see it, up. B. Yeah, okay. When, when Mo Jr. someday, 20, <laughs> 30, 40, 50 years from now, whenever is the time, gets to the league, <laughs> then you're going to see a real dog. Go, go get 50 a night. But... <laughs> We've been talking about some great players and, and we spent a little bit of time talking about Shaq. And, um, you know, we talked about Scott's Pistons beating the Lakers. Um, so speaking of great big men and speaking of beating the Lakers, uh, Nikola Jokic ruined LeBron's special night by obviously leading the Nuggets to a victory over there. And it got me thinking, where do you rank Nikola Jokic, the reigning finals MVP, reigning NBA champion, two-time MVP of the league? Where do you rank him amongst the all-time great big men of NBA history? Scott, I'm gonna start with you because I know, I know what BJ's gonna say. So I'm gonna start with you, Scott. <laughs> you know, I know BJ's got a list of like 25 names he's gonna rattle off. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, no, no, you. Know, I tell you what, boy, it is really difficult to compare people across eras and generations. Here's what I will say for Jokic right now, and I might get pushback on this. But I got to consider him the best center in this era today. He's Easily. not more talented than Joel Embiid. 
Now, let me just say that. But we talk about this all the time. He's more available. He's a two-time MVP. He's a champion. He plays the game the right way. I mean, he's impacted winning. He has shown us that. So that's why, I, to me, in all fairness, I've got to lean towards him in today's game because of what he has accomplished. Now, he's not a great defender, as we know, but he does rebound well for, for the position. Um, Underrated aspect, especially even if you watch that game against the Lakers, he has fantastic yes. hands. And yes, he's, uh, he's yeah, amazing no, he's, at stealing uh, the ball and deflecting the ball when it gets through, goes through the paint. The amount of deflections the Nuggets come up with and that allows yeah. them to score in transition, which obviously isn't a huge defensive prowess, what, but what, I wouldn't say he's a about, bad defender. No, I'm not saying he's a bad but that's No, that's no, not, not you, but as in that's the narrative around him is that yeah, he's a exactly. bad defender. No, but, that's what, but he rebounds his position uh, very well. I think he communicates on the back line. You know, he, he's smart. He's, he, he's become... A, a valuable team defender for them. The guy is, I mean, it's unbelievable watching him get things done because of his lack of athleticism, to be honest with you. You know, he doesn't have the quickest feet. He does have quick hands, as you mentioned. He, you know, he doesn't elevate off the floor at all. I do think he's strong. I think he's very strong, but he's very clever and he just really sees the game a couple plays ahead. So that to me, he is the best in this era. Now, with that being said, as you analyze the this era of big people, when you talk about centers, you basically talking about he and Joel Embiid of true true centers to me. Is there anybody I'm missing? You know, Brooke Lopez is in there, but that's but we're talking like, about like the great like Brooke Lopez. Exactly, is a role right? That's, what I'm, stage. that's so, my point. That's so when my, we talk about bigs, like really and truly, Rick, just those two yeah. now. The previous yes, decade, it, it was like Dwight Howard on his own. And then yes. that, that, that was then, really, then before they had like Yao Ming and Shaq and those guys. But this is the end of yes. a, end of a yes. era. But but you're going back, you know, then you got to go back to the the star age of the big men when you're talking about Russell and Chamberlain and uh, Kareem. And then, you know, then you, you go into the- uh, Yeah, I think the top the five world. big man centers of all time for me is solidified. Kareem, Bill Russell, Wilt, Shaq, and Hakeem Olajuwon. For me, that's solidified. Right. See, I, and I, my point, what I'm getting to, you know, I haven't been able to see him match up with guy, athletes like that. You yeah. know what I mean? It's really the only athlete that Jokic is matched up with like that. Well, and you've and, not and, seen and, their matchup because still... Embiid's scared of playing in Denver. So you probably ain't going to see the matchup. <laughs> Yeah, but but MB <laughs> has played well has played well against him. I think statistically, there will be a case to be made to put him in there when he's done because he's going to have multiple MVPs. His numbers are going to be off the charts. You know, he's going to you know from scoring, assisting to you know multiple championships after this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If he win another championship after so watching last gonna, night, he's going to have a very good written case to go in there. But boy, the athleticism of all these other guys I mentioned before uh, makes it tough for me to put him in that top five right now of all time. What would he have to do in order to crack that top five? Because those are five of the best players we've... Those top five centers well, well, might well, be I think what he's saying, listen to what Scott is the saying. Yeah, yeah. There, there's a certain... When you're evaluating players, this is, everyone has a crack in their game, if you will. There's a certain mm -hmm. physical limitation that I don't care what we do. I don't care what mm -hmm. the numbers say that right. he will be facing. So for instance, yeah. we, we have these top five players, but let me tell you something. He didn't have to play against a Moses Malone. And by the way, yeah. Moses, Malone, Moses, was yeah, the, exactly. Moses Malone was the Moses Malone was a guy who tutored Hakeem Olajuwon, who you just named in your top five. Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. no Akeem Olajuwon without Big Mo. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ralph Sampson yeah. predated mm -hmm. all of these guys mm -hmm. in many ways because he was the blueprint for what you're watching right now when you say Wimbenyama. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we know that there's a level of <clears throat> athlete that mm -hmm. he just hasn't seen. For instance, right. there was a Daryl Dawkins. That was yeah. a different <laughs> level of athlete. Mm -hmm. that yeah. he just hasn't seen. Okay, and I'm not taking away anything. 
I love no, exactly. Jokic for one. I, I love Jokic because he's carried on the tradition of a big. He's not a big trying to be little. He's actually a big who is big and he yeah, plays exactly. big and he punishes these little guys when they come with the small ball stuff. Yep. He is a great player in his era because he has the mentality of not a tall guy, but a big man. So he he deserves to be in the conver- in the conversation. However, I played against the bonus. Arvidas. Just for anyone. I understand. played against Arvidas the bonus. The original. Okay. I played against Arvidas. And I saw him before the injuries. <laughs> okay. If Arvidas was playing in the NBA prior to the injury, he would have been in the top 50 or top 75, whatever the thing, without question. He was that level of athlete, that level of passer, and he's bigger, stronger, more athletic than these um, guys are. I, I, I just want to say, Gilbert Arenas, if you're listening, I'm very sorry that you have to hear that. That no, no, no. Yeah, no I know I, how I you feel know. about hey, European players. I'm sorry, Arvidas Gilbert. Arvidas Sabonis, <laughs> okay? Arvidas Sabonis was that guy. I saw this guy, okay? Yeah. There was a different level of athlete. David Robertson was a different level of yeah. athlete. No question. Nate Thurman. Okay. All these guys, you know what I mean? Like these guys were a different level athlete. Uh, This guy, Jokic, and then I, and then I'll let it go. He is in the conversation, whatever it is, because he's carried on the tradition, which we, and I say, we, the caretakers of the game, right? Currently Mm -hmm. we try to eliminate this mentality. That's a fact by going small ball and Jokic, thank goodness. Came about and said, whoa, whoa, hold on. And Embiid and these guys. And now anybody who plays small ball versus Jokic, you're going to get that 35, 12, and 12 and a loss. Because you can't play small ball versus him. And that's all we're saying, Mo, because it was a different time. Mm -hmm. There was a time, Mo, where any big thought it was an insult for you to even consider doubling. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Listen to what I'm saying. There was a... There was big guys took they took pride in saying yeah, this was their one office one. in that paint. <clears throat> no mm-hmm. question. Okay. They if you came, if if Scott and I drove in the lane, they would run up the court and say, Now listen, you got that one layup. Be lucky you got that one. Don't come down here again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And, and, and you know what it, it, it reminds me of something. Ben, when we were getting we were talking about it earlier. When we would play the Lakers, it doesn't matter how big Ben Wallace, six eight, six nine, if you're stretching, guard and Shaq. And it was talk about well, maybe we need to double it. Ben, no, 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 no. I got it. <laughs> so that to BJ's point, that was, you know, that's how big men were cut. But this is how, how I'm watching like I'm watching the Lakers game. The Lakers are saying Rui Hachimura. You yeah, powerful. he guarded him more. You he guarded your kitchen, more than so else Andy yesterday. Davis can help. Yeah, no, it's crazy mm-hmm. to me. It's crazy. Do you know what I often think about? Um, obviously, not in the same stratosphere of the players we mentioned, but do you guys remember Jalil Okafor? Mm-hmm. Guys like Jalil yes. Okafor and you know Al Jefferson, these back to the basket bigs who were just unfortunately for them born into the wrong era of the NBA, because that post up game that they had as a big man trying to play big. That's when it was being phased out by teams. And if they were just born into a different era, it could have been a whole different story. But, you know, speaking of Jokic and, and how the Denver Nuggets are dominating, we're seeing an explosion of offensive talent. And Scott, you sent something into our little group chat this week that was really fascinating. Um, you said that this is the fourth season a conference has had 10 teams at at least five games over 500. Obviously, the Lakers losing last night put them back below 500. But before that, um, it's only ever happened in the Western Conference, never in the East. Previously, it was in 2000, 2001, 2007, 2008, and 2017, 2018. Is this a true parity now with 10 teams over 500, five games over 500? Or is it just a lack of a truly dominant team over in the West? Because in the Celtics, you've got the the hierarchy tiers of the dominant teams. Whereas in the West, Mm -hmm. it's kind of looking... Very open. I'm going to say it's true parity. And here's why. And I've gone back and forth on this. Obviously, we just got done talking about Denver. Denver still, uh, as of today, would be my favorite, you know, in terms of what I've been watching over the 
past few weeks. And I, you know, I like the way that they're trending. But when you look, and the reason why I say <clears throat> it's true parity, you look at the top two teams right now in terms of record, Minnesota and Oklahoma City. They're going to be around for a while. They're led by terrific young players. Um, have two great, you know, young guards and and you know, Alexander o, uh, over in uh, OKC and Edwards in Minnesota. They've got big people, you know, Holmgren in OKC, you know, Rudy Gobert, Carl Anthony Towns over at Minnesota. They're gonna be around for a while. They're not going anywhere. Denver's not as long as Jokic is playing. They're not going anywhere for a while. That's three teams. The Clippers, we've talked a lot about them over the past few weeks. They have the ability to compete for a championship. Just had a big loss with Russ fracturing his hand, but I'm assuming he's back in time for the playoffs. You know, you got to look, you know, got to give them a shot at it. Kawhi Leonard, who's proven that he could take a team on a, on a championship run with the type of two-way play that he brings to the table. So that's another team. Uh, and, you know, th after that, you know, that's five teams right there. And then you talk about the Lakers and Golden State who aren't, you know, Golden State's playing a lot better right now. Much better. But has, yeah, but they, you know, championship pedigree, four championships amongst their core uh, three guys and their young players are starting to come along. And we know, the, we talked, you know, a lot about the Lakers up and down. But if they get into the playoffs, you know, they get through the, 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 the playing round, assuming that's where they end up the playing round and get into the playoffs. Now, with LeBron, Anthony Davis, and some of the supporting cast on that team, they can lock heads with a lot of these teams in the West and and pull off some upsets based on where they're seated. So I th I think it's truly a conference that I wouldn't be surprised if one of six teams could come out of it this year. I, and it'll just be an interesting round. I disagree. I okay fully believe that the Denver Nuggets are going to come out of this. I believe mm -hmm. that they've been coasting the regular season so far and they're just waiting to get to the playoffs. As you can see, they've won their last six straight games. So you so you, you don't think it's parity? You think it's just a one dominant team still? I, I think it's one dominant team, but the one dominant team just isn't fussed about the regular season right now. Mm -hmm. Because I'll put it like this. When we play 2K, when you play video games, right? You might be chilling. You might be laying back. No, 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 no. Roll with me here, BJ. You might be chilling. Hey, 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 so hey, let me land. You got to let me land with this. You got to let me land. Okay. You should be chilling, okay. playing your game, right? But then when it gets to the fourth quarter, you see people go from doing this, laying back in their seat. Now everyone sits forward and they really lock in. And that's what I believe the Denver Nuggets are doing now that the All-Star break is over. They've been laying back in their chair, chilling throughout the regular season so far. And now the All-Star break is done. They just won six straight. They're leaning forwards. They're starting to lock in and elevate their game. And I just believe that there's no team in the West that's going to oh, stop them in, in the look, playoffs. I Look, I, I started in the beginning and said, I would favor them. Mm. But it's, but... Uh, but parity means there's not, an equal chance. Yeah, yeah, I just, yeah, yeah, I just yeah, don't... Yeah, parity, I, but I'm saying there is a legitimate chance. You, you could have a favorite mm. and still have parity. Yeah. It, it wouldn't be a shock... If but that, they were, if they got upset by one of the top teams in the Western Conference, well, I mean, it would. Be, but I'm, I'm saying, saying it would be a shock to me. That's how much I believe in you. in them. If everyone's healthy, right? No, if we just yeah, say yeah, everyone's no, I, healthy, I, get, I, I would be it. shocked if any team can beat them four out of seven times in a series. I I yeah. would be shocked. BJ, what do you think? Oh, Scott, are you done? Are you done, Scott? You, yeah, you, I'm, you're I'm done. Yeah, no, I can add it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I I think this is the 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 former athlete in me. There's always a chance, and because I respect all thirty teams, I respect the game enough to know that anyone can be beat at any given time. I also would love to believe that, yeah, it's possible to sit back in the chair, as the example you as you mentioned, and then turn it on whenever you're ready to turn it on. These are human beings. That's not how it works. Either the switch is on or the switch is off. If there's one glaring weakness with the Denver Nuggets is their depth. Mm -hmm. Their depth, okay? You, wanna, you want to play 
and get through the regular season with a, with a minimal amount of energy that you possibly can and still be successful because the regular season matters. That's the one thing that I can't, if you're going to be a champion in this league, you can't devalue the preseason, the regular season, and just say, well, I'll turn it on once the postseason starts. That's not how this works. You must value the regular season because the regular season is your dress rehearsal before you get to the playoffs because everything you really want to know about your team will be exposed once the playoffs begin. And there's no time now to be messing around talking about we got to figure things out. Either you're going to do it or you're going to be sent home. Jokic, as great as he is, He's expending, in my opinion, a lot of energy in the regular season. He's a big man. And as you begin to win, and if anyone has done this, they will appreciate what I'm about to say. When you start winning championships, you're playing longer than your opponents. You're playing longer during the season. You're playing in a condensed amount of time, and the, your rest is shorter. And when you start talking about repeating, suddenly now you're putting a, a, a ridiculous amount of stress into the same amount of time as the other people who are getting rest or who aren't advancing in the playoffs. We can't forget that Jokic is not some little guard just running around from three-point line to three-point line. This man is playing baseline to baseline, and he's a physical player and if we continue to think that this man is going to continue to just roll through this thing without any help because you got to help your best player get through that regular season that's the key you got to help him get through that regular season so that he can be the Jokic that we all have come to expect in the postseason so in my opinion if they're going to continue to have an extended amount of success, which Jokic is very capable, they're going to have to really understand the following in Denver. They're going to have to value depth and what that means to help those players get through the regular season. That's just how the game is. That's what it is. The 82 games matter. We've seen, how many teams have we seen say, well, I just want to get through the regular season because I'll turn it on. Mm -hmm. Well, if you don't get through the regular season, you won't even get to the postseason. Yes, so right. I think it's important now to say no one's questioning Jokic or Jamal Murray's brilliance in the postseason. But what I can't do is keep asking Jokic to dig into the well and have these 35, 12s, and 13s in January, February, knowing when I really need, need them is in May and June, if we're going to win a championship. And that's my only little chink in the armor, if you will, is their depth. Because yeah. those games are going to start to add up. No one is, is exempt from this. No one. And if you're talking about going back to back, ask anyone who's done it. They will that will wear you down over an ex, over an extended amount of time, and the amount of pressure that this young man has, Denver. You and I talked about this, Mo. Denver is expected to win. It's not like OKC, where it's like, oh my gosh, OKC right. is here. And when you play with the expectation to win, that's a whole different ball game. So, I hope because I want to see Jokic be brilliant. I really do. But to see what he's doing minus two players, not one, they lost two key players from a year ago. And we're still saying they should win the championship. Mo, that's very difficult to overcome. And we must, there's a human component to this. And any executive, and Scott understands this, you just don't take out Jeff Green and Bruce Brown and then say, oh yeah, we can still win the championship. That's almost impossible. And Jokic is still doing it, leading the charge. I mean, mm -hmm. the other players too. Mm -hmm. But that's almost impossible. And we're still saying it. So that just speaks to his brilliance. But I also want to respect the fact that that is a lot of pressure 
for him to be able to do this, though. And he's doing it, which is yeah. a testament to his brilliance of what he's doing. So I just wanted to say that. Fair play. Fair play. I mean, yeah. only time's going to tell. Um, so so maybe you guys are right, and it is parity across the West. But which teams are you guys looking at this week that you're going to be focusing on as the race to the playoffs continues? Scott, who, who are you keeping an eye on? Well, I'm going to stay in the Western Conference. And that's the theme for and today, I'm, huh? Exactly. That's the theme for the day. And I'm going to talk about the Los Angeles Lakers. Mm -hmm. you know, again, they lost their eighth straight game to the Nuggets last night. Hmm. They're sitting in the 10th spot. So they're in the final play-in spot. And they've got a huge, huge uh, homestand coming up. Thunder, Kings, Bucks, T-Wolves all this week. Oof. And boy, if if they want to, and, and they're all bunched in that seven to ten range. But if they want to move up, and at worst, you know, finish in that seven or eight slot, where you can just where you just need to win one game. Yeah, you got two chances to make, to make it, it. it, and you got you got two, double your chances. You got two chances. Yes, they got to win these games at home. What at do you worst, think their record is one. over those? Or three and one. You think they're going to go three and one, or they need to go three no, and one? No, no, they need to go three and one. But what do you think they but go like, over what, those what? four? I see five hundred. Two and two. Mm -hmm. I see two and two this week. I see two and two this week. Um, what do you think? Say, yeah, Kings, Thunder, Bucks, Timberwolves. How many of those are the Lakers winning? That's tough. When, I, I think when we look back on when we look back on the Lakers season. We're going to say this four grain stretch here that you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. I think we'll say everything because it's, it's, it's really a six game stretch because then they've got the Kings yes. again and then the Warriors who are also fighting in those playing spots. So there's a six I, game they're, stretch. They're at the I, Kings. They're at the Kings at one game that second time. Yeah. Right? They're at the Kings. And yeah. Back so there's five. Yeah. I think this stretch yeah. is pivotal mm -hmm. to their season. There's no question. There's no question. And, 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 and here is, here is, here's what I've come to understand about veterans. LeBron James and Anthony Davis are the veterans, the key veterans on their team. They're the best. They're the two best players. Over this four game or six game stretch, as, we, as we're talking about, they're going to make a determination. They're not, they're not going to say this, but they're going to make a determination. Can we compete and win to play in the playoffs? And if the answer is yes, I think they'll go better than 500. I think they'll be like, we can do this. We just have to get in and play because they know that they can win at home. And they can, and, and LeBron and AD, well, I think will say, man, if we can steal a game on the road versus Sacramento or still a game, we can play and compete. But if they are below 500, I think we will point back to these games as saying this was oh. this is what we call their moment of truth to their mm. season. And I don't know the answer to that. Right. But if right. they determine that they can win, I think they'll go three and one because they need to go three and one right now. Because oh, it's yeah. that it's that tight. But yes. if suddenly OKC comes in here and blows them out. <laughs> Sacramento mm -hmm. runs them out of the out of here, and all of a sudden, <laughs> Golden State, who's playing much better, wins. I think the Lakers will be like, eh, I don't know that AC. Eh, we can't beat OKC anyway <laughs> if we mm -hmm. get in. So mm -hmm. I think this four games will be. I think Scott is spot on once again of identifying the. It, it's pivotal that they go three and one. Oh man, yeah. I don't think they have a choice here. Yeah. Because yeah, if they huge. don't, if they don't, I think their season really yeah. is kind of like mm -hmm. kind of falls apart if they yeah. don't go three and one. Mm -hmm. I no question. And look, you can't and you can't go back to the end season tournament now. That's way like years ago. <laughs> exactly. I mean, exactly. But I'm just saying, you 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 can't this. What's happening now is what's most important. And they got to, and to BJ's point, and you know, what I was saying too, they have to show mm -hmm. that they can be for real and, uh, and and make a push. And I think just for the, the psyche of the team, 
Yes. Yeah, there's home, also that psychological edge. Like if you're yes, facing the Warriors yeah. in the playing tournament in just over yeah. a month, it's, it's literally a month and a bit away, then you better beat them now so that they don't have the advantage. BJ, which is the team you're looking at this week? Well, since we're staying out west, I might as well do the same. I'm looking at the OKC Thunder. Okay. And on the to the top. Yes, I, I'm going there. They had, in their eyes, an awful loss last week. Versus, <laughs> versus this first. Okay. Oh, man. They, so, so they were getting on to us in the comments on Instagram for saying that Wemby's top 20. I said he's a top 15 player. Everyone's in the comments saying Chet Holmgren's better. And then a few hours later, you saw him absolutely destroy Chet Holmgren and the Oak City Thunder. Well, and I just I, said, well, there it is, guys. There well, it is. Like, listen, he didn't destroy Chet Holmgren. Yes, he you know, did. He, he yeah, took he control of the game down the clutch. Blocked a seven foot two player on a pull up jump shot, came down the other end here three. Bro, he destroyed him. He cooked okay. him. That's what they say. I'm gonna That's look at OKC. I'm gonna look at OKC because now, as we like to say, they're playing meaningful games with a young group this late in the mm-hmm. season, which is incredible. Okay. I never ex- thought I would say meaningful games, meaning they could be the best in the Western Conference, yep. meaningful games. Mm-hmm. But here we are. Now, as we like to say with a good team, let's let's stop the bleeding early. And let's not try to, you know, everyone's going to have a bad loss. You're going to have a loss. Everyone needs to be respected in this league. I don't care if you have the worst record. Every team needs to be respected. That's why you approach every game with a level of professionalism. Now, I think the, the OKC Thunder are going to show me who they really are. Can you go out and get a win when you need one? See, so that's what I want to know. They've got five games this week. They've got the Suns, on the road at the Suns, on the road at the Lakers, on the road at the Blazers, and then two at home, the Heat and the Grizzlies. What's their record over those five games? Well, uh, I, we're going to find out who they are. Now, what, they need to go at least 4-1. I think they're 5-0. Okay, well, that's fine. That's that's hard to do. I'm going to say 4-1. At the very least, they got to go 3-2. and two. At the very least, over that five-game stretch. Now, 5-0, and oh, you really going to show me something. Now, mm-hmm. all of a sudden, now you're saying, okay, they understand the moment. Now, see, not, that, that's at what, the teams you, they're going up against. I mean. Well, but, uh, but, yeah. but, but again, you plan against other great players. You plan against KD. You plan against great players here. Anything can happen. Who's the great I player on the know Blazers if, or, the, or the Christies that they're playing against? I just saw them lose the other night versus... The, the the San Antonio who have a great player yeah anybody can be beat at any given moment that's the thing when you when you dress up in this league you got to respect the game there's no <laughs> there's truly no days off so I'm saying this I want to see can they go out and get a win when it really matters it's not like they're coming in and people don't know they're not a good team everyone knows they are at the top of the Western Conference. And they need these wins. Why? Because they're fighting for home court advantage. People want to say, oh, they don't have that luxury of saying what they know, what LeBron or Steph Curry knows. They know how to go out. We're not concerned about that with them. But with this team, we need to be in front of our home court. We need to have every advantage we can because we still don't know how they're going to respond under the under the duress of the playoffs. So I think this is an important stretch for them. I'm going to be fascinated to watch how they start playing now possession basketball where possessions matter. You know, you will have those lackadaisical turnovers during the regular season. All of a sudden now those get magnified once the playoffs begin. So I think this will show me a little bit about who they really are as we head into the final stages of the regular season. Scott, what do you think their record is over those five games? Oh, I think they're at least four and one. Four and one. What I would need to see from them, what I and I talked about this earlier in the year, but as we're getting much closer to playoff basketball, how are they going to respond to physical basketball for forty eight minutes? Great and point. That, you know, Lynn, you know when when you know BJ talking about possession basketball. Now those teams that they're playing, I, I don't know that they're overly physical themselves. You mentioned uh, Phoenix. Uh, that that's not a, a physical team by by nature, and then you 
you mentioned Portland and uh, who else? And the, the Grizzlies, Memphis, Grizzlies play, Miami. Grizzlies will play. Now Miami's a physical team. Mm -hmm. You know that that that'll be a game that I really want to watch in their run just to see how they respond to that because Miami is in the midst of a push to get into that top six in the Eastern Conference. I don't think they want to fool around with the the playing anymore, and they're bunched up from four to eight in the Eastern Conference. So that'll be a big game for them, and that'll be a game that I really want to watch in terms of the physicality and OKC's response to it. Well, you guys went out west. I'm going to head back over to the Eastern Conference where I belong. <laughs> now, I want to talk about my Celtics who are on a 10-game streak. they got some tough games coming up. they got the Warriors in just a couple of hours here while we record this show. they got the Nuggets. they got the Cavs. they got the Suns. But I want to talk about the Milwaukee Bucks. They're on a five-game winning streak. Their last four games, they've held their opponents to under 100 points, which sounds fantastic. But their recent opponents have been the Bulls, the Hornets twice, and the 76ers without Joel Embiid. So take that into context. But now... This week, you got the Clippers, you got the Warriors, you got the Lakers, and you got the Clippers again. Doc Rivers, former side of the LA Clippers, uh, one of which is at home and the other one's on the road. I want to see how they fare over this stretch because I think this stretch will tell us a lot of whether they were just beating up on bad teams or whether they can carry that momentum of their defense really being locked in against the bad teams to now go up against teams that are competing in the playoff picture in the Western Conference to see how they fare. What do you think their record is going up against? Those four matchups, uh, Clippers, Warriors, Lakers, and Clippers again. They're playing good basketball right now. I I, I see three and one from them. Um, I tell you what, though, but you you talk you to BJ's point earlier. You can't dis disrespect any of these teams, and I know they pounded some teams that aren't winning right now in these last four games, and their defense is improving. But let's not forget. They lost to some of these teams early yeah. in the year too. And right before going into the all-star break, they lose at Memphis, which sent Doc yeah. off into, you know, talking about <laughs> certain players' commitments and things of that nature. So I took these last four games as a step in the right direction for the team, that there's a, been a mental adjustment to that end of the floor. It doesn't matter who you're playing in that, in, in, in that way that they've bought in, they're defending, they did what they were supposed to do against those opponents. And that's what we were looking for from them early in the year. And they were hot and cold in that area. So I, you know, I like what they're doing now. Yeah. The competition, you know, they're going to be prepared to play against the heavyweights, if you will. Uh, and as, again, as long as you got Giannis over there too, the competitive nature that he brings each and every night. And I think it, permeates throughout the team they're gonna always have a chance mm -hmm. bj what are your thoughts uh at home to the clippers and then a little west coast road trip warriors lakers and the clippers again what's their record over those four games i i'm, I'm not really concerned you know they, they they can go two and two the reason being is they're as you guys were talking i was just looking at the standings right they're eight games from the second place team whereas right. you look in the western conference Eight games is the difference between the, no, the, the number they're, one seed. They're eight games from the first seed. They're one game behind, or they're even record yeah. with the Cavaliers who are the two seed. No, I'm talking about your, your Celtics. I'm talking about your Celtics. Okay, right? yeah, yeah. They're eight games yeah, off the yeah, first yeah. seed. Yeah, they're yeah, not getting yeah. the first seed. But yes. that second seed, though, on the way to the conference finals, you know, a second round matchup against the Cavaliers, you would want home court you, advantage for that. Yeah, you would know. if you, you always like it if you can get it. Yeah, 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 you're like mm -hmm. it. Um, we're talking about your Celtics, right? Is that what we're talking we're about? Talking about the Bucks. Bucks. We're talking about the Bucks. All right. I'm not really concerned about Milwaukee as far as looking at them in a traditional way because they've had an untraditional <laughs> yeah, season. <laughs> to say the least. Yes, yeah. I mean, I'm trying to be in a polite way, right? Yeah. <laughs> you, you know, you're like in the second seed and all of a sudden you fire your coach. You bring in a, a new coach, a new system, new players. You make you make a trade at the trade deadline. Mm -hmm. I don't really know how to evaluate a team like this and then look at you guys and say, "Hey, that's the team I'm going to choose to win with all of this, <laughs> <laughs> with all this movement." There's a lot of moving parts here. Okay. However, I don't know. One of you guys said it with Giannis. Here we are talking about they still have a chance <laughs> to it's, win it's, this it's, team. What happens when you got a great player? Okay. Exactly. All right. Mm -hmm. So 
I'm just going to say this. Giannis is that good. He's that great. I think I watched him Saturday night or so. A guy, what, Friday night or Saturday night, whatever I watched him. He had like 46 or something. He's just that good of a player. I don't know really what to say about this team. I'm not in love with their with their with their group and the group that they've put together from this standpoint. They're not a very athletic team. Yeah, older. okay, with the exception they're, they're with the Asian exception squad. with the exception of Giannis, right? They don't really have speed and quickness at any of the other positions other than Giannis. So, Giannis will keep them there. I think if they get the right matchups, I think Giannis can do it. I really do. Even though they've had all these moving parts, I still think they have a chance. But I'm not in love with this team as far as their ability to play against speed and quickness. And I'm concerned about them on the defensive end against certain matchups. Okay. But you have to give them respect. I, you know, and I, I and I'm just going to say this because I got to say this with Mo, you know, they are well coached. They are. Um, we, spoke we spoke about this in the week. We spoke about this in the week. The improvements on the defensive mm-hmm. side. We spoke about they, this. You, you know, um, I like the fact that, that, you know, Pat Bev, you know, I don't know where he's at physically in his career. However, you know, he's going to show up and fight and he's going to give them some, some leadership and, and things coming off the bench. But will he be able to play against that level of speed and quickness in the playoffs? It's going to be a big concern for them. And they're going to have to do some things. I saw, I, I've been watching them. They're starting to play a little zone. If you guys have been watching them mm-hmm. lately, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. they've been playing a little zone. So they're doing some things. I, I, I Listen, if something doesn't work, you should try other things. So give Doc and those guys credit. And it's going to be fascinating to watch. And like I said, I still think because of Giannis that they're here. And I just, you know, and that's, that's about all I can really can say about them. And uh, they were one of the teams I really liked. I liked the fact when they got Damian Lillard. But so far, it hasn't really worked, especially on the defensive end. But they're at least trying different things and different methods. So, um, you know, I got to respect that. Yeah, they are improving. And we'll be here breaking it down every step of the way. BJ and I are here Monday to Friday every day. Scott will be back on Monday with us again. So make sure you uh, subscribe, YouTube, Spotify, Apple. Scott, you got a smile on your face. Talk to me. What's going on? (laughs) I'm just looking forward to it. Looking forward to the week because I think we'll have a lot to talk about next mm-hmm. time we, we mm-hmm. get together yeah i think next week we're gonna have to recheck in on your top five contenders yeah 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 maybe we gotta check out that we, list we, we, yeah, we yeah, gotta check in yeah. I, look mm-hmm. i've already given you a pre- preview i've already okay. Okay. elevated denver uh okay. in the western conference so i've already now given we're you talking preview now we're list. talking i've been standing <laughs> on business since the summer but here we go we're gonna be more on that next week appreciate you joining yeah. us as always scott pj and i'll be yeah. back tomorrow make sure you guys lock in subscribe join the discord which is linked below in the description where you can join our community talk basketball 24 7 with other fans and most importantly until next time get buckets <laughs>